Hey folks, Ricky aka the war champion is in the building and today I just want to have a little discussion again. You know, last time I was able to talk to us to you guys about um, you know, my top 5 campaign stages. Now I wanted to move over and talk about eventually and discuss these top 5 heroic stages that I um, felt were the um the hardest. Um this one was kind of hard for this was really hard for me to put together a video for this one because you know, heroic stages I mean, most people don't really talk much about these stages but also these stages are um they're different than the campaign is that the restrictions and upgrades are are meant to be fitting for you know the um the level itself so you're not you're not going to expect to see like level five upgrades on a level like southport that's that's just not going to happen they're not going to allow a hero to be used so th this one was kind of hard to put together so i already know i'm sure most of you are going to have a different list but without further ado let's see what i had put together Number five, I ranked Ice Wind Pass at number five. So difficulty scale was 7.5 out of 10. This one is the restrictions, only level four upgrades and no heroes are allowed on this one. So you have to play without a hero. The starting bounty was 1100. 12 strategic points are available on the map. Um, the Sasquatch is available. Now, if you play it on, on Steam, the bounty to, um, you have to, of course, rain a fire, the ice where you see that cave at to free the Sasquatch. Then it costs 400 on Steam, but to buy it on Flash is 500. Now, this one I put, this one was kind of hard for me, in my opinion. I, I'm not going to say it was over overwhelmingly hard, but I did struggle a, a little bit with it at times because it was kind of tricky. And it was hard because several enemies caused quite a lot of trouble. I'm sure most of you remember the gar, especially in the second wave with the gargoyles. They they um and even the last wave, they changed the aim of the towers and take the aim off of other other troublesome enemies. I, I'm sure most of you remember that. Also, the spider matriarchs came, especially they caused a little bit of a problem on that on that level two on this level two and then the troll champion troll chieftains were kind of tough to deal with i know there were other enemies such as the winter wolf and the yetis but those enemies specifically caused quite a bit of trouble you know if, if you let them break past that um that choke point or the gargoyles hover over the over the other enemies like the trolls and the winter wolf and the yetis you would be in quite a bit of trouble this level is not that bad honestly but it is in my opinion one a top five um tough heroic um challenge and then also most of the action occurs where the paths coincide at so it, that you see that choke point where out right where the um the 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 cave um exit right there at the bottom and then that bottom um path they meet together that's where a lot of the action happens at so you would probably use artillery to to pound the area and have a barracks to hold all of that there but if if, if anything breaks past that choke point it, it it gets bad and they they do a good job of causing problems there with rushing fast moving enemies and bringing powerful enemies and bringing flying units to change the aim of the towers just to make um to cause a lot of trouble and that's why i kind of felt this one was kind of hard and then here's the wave composition that just shows you here in the first wave you have the 16 wolf 7 troll at the top at the bottom 12 giant spiders and then the second wave you see there third fourth and fifth and sixth wave yeah, so that you, you see that yeah second wave, the trolls and the gargoyles, the gargoyles eventually could hover over the trolls and create um, problems and change the aim of the towers. You see the third wave, they bring the wargs, wolves, and the winter wolves. They rush them, you know, they rush them along with those matriarchs. That's where it can get bad. And if you use artillery because they attack so slowly, the matriarch spiderlings um, can change the aim of the towers because if they spawn them, you know, you you might end up missing the horde of enemies when they're grouped at the choke point. And then the fourth. Wave wave is it's sort of tough they, they they bring that troll champion and then the chieftain they can cause a, a little bit of problem but it's not overwhelmingly bad if you have like an uh, um a ranger's hideout with the wrath of forest and the poison fifth wave is a little bit harder that that one they brought the matriarchs and they brought um less trolls but they brought more troll champions to cause problems so this that wave was pretty tough and then the last wave was a good example of what happens when gargoyles come flying units change the aim of the towers making that kind of tough so let's see some clips of it so it's the first wave 
Yeah, yeah, you see the wolves and they, they all that hordes right there at the choke point. You see they they can, they have a potential to bust loose because a horde of them come. That's the first wave. Second wave, there's the gargoyles. I, I killed them all off, but yeah, that's an example there. They can hover over those trolls and cause a lot of problems. So you got to rain a fire of the trolls and get them out the building. And then here's the third wave. This here shows the wargs and the wolves and the, and the um, winter wolves and then the matriarchs all getting at that choke point. But you see what happens there, right there? The, mat the spiderlings can change the aim of the towers there. And then this is the fourth wave. This is with the troll champions. Troll chieftain. Then this is the fifth wave. They brought more troll champions. You want to rain a fire, the champions kind of, you know, I felt that was necessary, but that Wrath of Forest takes good care of them. And then the last wave is with the Winter Wolf and the Gargoyles. So that's it for that one. That, that was my top five there. Number four on my list. Fungal Forest. Yeah, this one might come as a surprise to most of you, but I don't, this, this, it is kind of tough, but I don't think it's all, it's all that bad, honestly. I, I, I really don't. Um, it's difficulty scale. I ranked it eight out of 10. Restrictions, level five upgrades and heroes are allowed. But by the way, this is all with respect to playing without a hero. So if you play without a hero, that's how I'm ranking. Um, I'm, t I'm factoring that in. By the way, I'm also factoring veteran mode and I'm also factoring in playing all versions, the flash, in case you were wondering. Starting bounty is 1700 um, strategic points um, 15. So why did I feel this one was hard? It's for one It's a highly barrack restricted level and the enemies that come though. They are not really all that fast It's it's um you would typically want to you have some powerful barracks at least maybe a paladin or two to hold them off but it's already a high level you know you see you have two acid pools so you have you have a lot to um uh, worry about you know if, if barracks die at a certain point maybe at a higher tier part of the map you'll have husk forming out of that acid pool or possibly a, a swamp thing if you use an earth elemental so you have to be real careful the swamp thing appears Four out of the six waves, and it appears a total of 16 Swamp Things appear on this. So, uh, four on the first wave, four on the fourth wave, and eight on the last wave. So... Yeah, you you have to you have to keep that in mind. A good player is going to keep that in the back of their mind when the swamp, um, specifically the type of enemies that are going to come, and that swamp thing makes its um appears that many times. You have to efficiently get rid of that, and the best way is with insta killing. So you when you're playing, you want to make sure you save bounty and and um at the same time have enough bounty to deal with the rest of the other enemies. But you want to have enough bounty to have some insta killing to get rid of the swamp things. Um, of course, I just mentioned the swamp things, but all also, the Rot Shroom, Noxious Creeper, and Tainted Treant combo, those, that enemy, all of those enemies are just tough, and they're hard to put up with. They're all annoying, every one of them. So, it's very, that's, to me, makes it kind of hard on this one, is that they kind of do a good job of troubling you with all of those enemies um, to a certain extent. And then, uh, lastly, is it's kind of hard and tricky stopping the nauseous creepers in the rushrooms, especially early on. Like the second wave, they get a little crafty with you. See, they the, the producers know that you would probably have you, in the beginning, um, you would have four swamp things appear on the left side so they know that to get rid of that the most efficient way is to use um a, an insta kill maybe an arcane or a polymorph so with that being said they trouble you the next wave with 22 rot shrooms and then two noxious creepers on both sides but you you really it's it's to your greatest benefit to kill off the nauseous creeper by an insta kill but they time it properly by using the rot shrooms to intercept the insta kill so you you might be unlucky and unfortunate um, to have the insta kill hit the rot shroom and then have to deal with a nauseous creeper so you you probably won't have a lot of bounty um, um left over to set up some very powerful towers because you used it on having the insta kill to deal with the swamp things in the beginning so it's kind of tricky dealing with those enemies um early on but overall it's this this it's 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 tough this is tough. Again, this is kind of hard for me to put this list together, but this this was kind of tough if you ask me. So let's see the wave composition. 
So there, four, 24 Husk, four Swamp Thing, first wave, 22 Rod Shrooms, two, two Nostra Creeps on both sides, the second wave, four Tainted Tree and 35 Rod Shrooms. They bring the house with the Rod Shrooms on the third wave, and that's, they can overwhelm you with those Rod Shrooms, and the Tainted Treants can sneak their way down there. They're, they're tough enough to get there. Fourth wave, again, there goes the four um, Swamp Things again. So you have to figure, now you got 30 Rod Shrooms, and they all appear from the top entrance. So you got to figure out a way to insta-kill that Swamp Thing and, and do it without, you know, being being efficient without trying to kill off um the rot shrooms by insta killing them you want to insta kill the swamp thing as that's most efficient um then the fifth wave is like that they bring a little bit of everything they bring a total of one swamp thing two nauseous creepers eight um tainted treants 26 nauseous creepers that's just their enemies are just all over the place on that one but i don't think that's all that bad and then the last wave they bring the house with the with the swamp things, folks. One on both sides, and then six from the top, and then they rush twenty four rot shrooms. But that last wave's not all that bad because you should know what to do by then with the swamp things. You should already be looking to insta kill them. So, with that being said, I mean, if I, I factored it in with without a hero, I factored I, I ranked this as an eight out of ten. I, I didn't think this is all that bad, but it is tricky and it's kind of tough. So let's see some clips of the waves. That's the first wave. You sheep the thingy, you get it out. Yeah, you gotta inst yeah, that's really the only threat is that first wave there. This is tricky here. Yeah, you gotta sheep the nauseous creeper, but you can't allow that rot shroom to get in the way. Then this is the you see the third wave, these rot shrooms, they brought 35 and they can get down there. Yeah, all those rot shrooms can get down there like that near the exit. Then the fourth wave, you got see, you gotta you gotta make sure you insta-kill the swamp thing, but there you got the rot shrooms getting in the midst of all of that. And then the fifth wave, I don't show everything, but they have um, nauseous creepers, um, a little bit of everything on this wave. There, yeah. And then the last wave, they brought the house. You see all these all these swamp things, but by now it's not hard like that because all you have to do is insta kill the swamp things. When you're setting up your towers, you should always keep that in mind if you're playing this heroic challenge. But that's pretty much about it. it this wasn't that bad like that. But I have it um, fourth on my list. Third on my list, um, this Glacial Heights might come as a surprise, but I'm, I'm again, I'm factoring it in the Flash version. So I own a Flash version. It's an 8 out of 10. If it's not Flash, I said it was 7 out of 10. Um, upgrades, uh, level 5 upgrades are allowed and heroes are allowed. Uh, interestingly, if you play Flash on this version, you start off with 5 lives. Yeah, that, that's true. You really do. And then the um, any other um, non-Flash version, you start off with one. But Flash, they say, and it's a reason they do that. Um, but starting bounty is 1,500, 12 strategic points. So not a lot for an elite stage, as you might expect. But why was it hard? Because the troll chieftain and the troll breaker combination, that would appear um, twice. It actually appears twice on the waves four and wave six, but it's hard to stop that with the troll because the you know in the flash the troll breaker is affected by the drum of war zill effect. So that that breaker is going to be very powerful and it's going to be very hard to stop if you try to um you know tank it with the chieftain in its presence. You also have the troll chieftain troll pathfinder combination that is hard to put up with, especially on the fourth and sixth wave. The troll chieftain troll champion combination the sixth wave is another prime example of why that is bad it's 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 difficult dealing with that the troll pathfinders also and other enemies such as the winter wolf they ch when they get on that ice path they change the aim of the um of the towers and so that's a big deal especially you know when especially on the last wave the last wave is tough because of that the the, the pathfinders they get on that ice and you know when they you 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 have those towers there uh, at the top to deal with those enemies that come out of the cable because those pathfinders come since they're changing the aim of the of the towers you don't you you end up not do, um doing any damage to any of the enemies that are coming out that cave and that's pretty problematic to some extent so that's why i felt this one was kind of tough i felt it was harder than harder than um fungal force they're about i rank them the same but I, I feel this one is a little harder than fungal force it's not fungal force isn't really it's because that last wave on fungal force isn't really hard compared to this one so let's see what i'm talking about these are the, uh, these are clips of me playing the flash version but oh but, but by the way uh i fall back up a little bit 
Yeah, that's the wave composition there. So 10 troll, 3 troll champions, 33 warg on the ice path, 13 trolls out of the cave, 5 troll champions on the on the um ice path, the second wave, third wave, 38 warg, uh one troll breaker come out of the out of the cave. So you you should have an insta kill to deal with that breaker. Otherwise, it, it's just gonna be bad. And you have 18 winter wolf coming on the ice path. That's kind of tough to hold that off as those as those winter wolf have has that shortest path to take to the exit. Fourth wave is when they bring the troll breaker. It's two of them, and then twelve trolls, and then three troll chieftain. But the troll breaker, one of them appears at the head, um, at the start when they when they enter out out of the cave. So you should already be able to insta kill the troll breaker, no problem. Then get one of them out of the building. But the second one will be a little tougher to stop. And then they bring 15 troll pathfinders so they can divert the aim of the towers. That's an example of their fifth wave. They kind of they just trouble you with troll champions and winter wolf. Nothing really overwhelmingly tough there but i like the i like the thought process there with the with the um, producers to bring that combination and then the last wave is hard i mean look at that out the cave seven troll chieftains seven troll breaker eight troll champions and then on the ice path you got one troll breaker 34 trap um, troll pathfinders now what's interesting about this last wave is that the troll chieftains all of them come out of the cave but they're all going to divert their path onto the ice path so they're going to meet up with the troll pathfinders so that's bad if you, because they're so durable they're going to meet on that on that ice path and they can bang the drum and enhance the speeding the speed attribute of the pathfinders making them very hard to stop as well as increase their armor and restore their hit points that's definitely bad and then the the troll champions will all follow behind the breakers and go through the cave and come down at the bottom side so you have it's tricky because you got two paths that are being covered. One but with the troll, troll pathfinders and the troll chieftain and the other side of the troll champion and the troll breaker. So that's why I kind of felt this one was a little overall. It's not that bad, but it is a little to me a tad bit harder than than fun, than fungal force. I had a little bit of trouble playing this on flash. This is the first wave. Not too overwhelmingly hard. You got a Tesla there to deal with all that. Second wave, still not all that bad. You got five troll champions, 13 trolls. And then there, I made the mistake. I didn't insta-kill the, the breaker, so I have to put up with them the hard way. The fourth wave, the, the breaker has separated from the chieftain. So that's that that right there could be it could be go both ways there, but that, that's an example there. That wave, this wave is all the winter wolf and the troll champions. And then this last wave. One breaker appears on the ice, but see, I got lucky there. I got insta kill. But if that that since I'm playing the flash version, if that chieftain met up with that breaker, that would have been really really bad. And then he yeah, you see, he gets on the ice with the pathfinders, so that can that can just make things tough there. And then you see all the breakers down there at the bottom. So that's number three on my list. Number two. Castle Blackburn. So I ranked this one at number two. Surprisingly, some of you might think this should be number one, but I uh, I felt this one was um I tied it with number one as far as difficulty. It's eight point five out of ten. Level five upgrades or the restrictions. No hero. I mean heroes are allowed, but again, this is with respect to playing without a hero. It's an eight point five out of ten. Starting bounty eleven 1 hundred. Strategy points fifteen. Why is it hard? Because the fallen knight and the spectral knights appear frequently on this one and they make you know so you have to invest in physical damaging and mage damaging towers uh, that that's a must it's a, it's a must and they appear very very frequently but what also made this one hard is that it, it it's, it's low bounty accumulated early on. So you're dealing with tough quality enemies such as the Spectral Knight and the Fallen Knights. But you 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 have you, you don't get a lot of bounty on the first, second, and third waves. Trust me on that. And that's 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 what I kind of felt made this stage kind of hard, especially if you play it without a hero. It's it's hard for those reasons. Um so with that being said, you have to be smart setting up your tower. Like, you know, you have to put um, mage towers or your barrack towers in the most in the wisest spot on the on the on the battlefield, you know, wherever you feel is the wisest. But you have to be real smart setting up the towers to deal with the enemies, especially if you're playing without a hero. Also, they do a pretty good job of bringing the enemies each uh, each wave uh, from different directions because you different um, entrances because you got four entrances and three exits. So the enemies, they, they do a good job. Of 
of switching up the um the the um, entrance paths that the enemies will appear on on each wave. Like the second wave, they brought six fallen knights, six spectral, and then they they changed everything up by bringing like four lichens coming from out of the woods. And then the lichens also do the loop de doop, and they take an alternative. They take a path exit that um that was that the skeletons on the first wave took in the beginning if they were to make um the loop around this uh, around this bin right here they they all take a different different exit path Com so they do a pretty good job of causing a lot of confusion and having enemies taking different paths that can cause quite a bit of trouble because you'd have to spread out your towers so that's what kind of made this one hard and then it's very important to hold troublesome enemies at the choke point especially on the third and fourth wave that is crucial let's uh, let's see the wave composition to see what i'm talking about there so the first wave out the swamp, uh, four spectral knights appear at the top where Lord Blackburn's entrance is at. Three fallen knight will appear and then out the woods is 40 skeletons. You only get 360 bounty after all that. Not much. Next wave, six fallen knight, six spectral knight, 480 bounty. Still not much. Um, the third wave, you see four lichen. Now that doesn't sound all that bad, but it's actually pretty clever because the producers figured that you would probably use barracks, um, or barracks and mage towers, but they take advantage of the barracks. Um, if you use barracks, they're going to take advantage of it because the lichen spread lycanthropy. So, and not only that, the lichens also appear out the woods. So they, and they, they do the loop de doop around the bin. They all take the exit path at the bottom. They don't go down the middle, the, the middle exit path where Lord Blackburn would take on, on the campaign stage. So they, they do a good job of sending the light that, that can be easily underestimated. I mean, they're fast. If they get, if you don't hold that lichen at that choke point in the middle of the center of the field, it's going to be bad because you'd have to you you already have low bounty you're playing with um that you've already accumulated so you'd have to spread out your towers but you're not going to have towers all over this place and that especially at the bottom to deal with that lichen if he does happen to break past that choke point the fourth wave 60 skeleton seven skeleton knight and then 18 werewolves out of the woods again another good example of holding werewolves at that at that choke point there and then also holding off the the hordes of the skeleton uh, as well as the skeleton knight, I think that's a mistake. That should be forty skeleton, or maybe sixty. I, I could, I think it is sixty. I'm, I'm, I may be mistaken, but that's what it says. Sixty. The fifth wave, they do it again. They bring out the woods. Sixty skeleton, ten skeleton knight, and then eight spectral knight, ten fallen knight from Lord Blackburn's entrance. So it's a combination of again, they're bringing that combination of those magic and art and and fully immune to physical damage um, type of enemy. So you have to have some kind of way of holding that off, especially without a, without a hero. You have to figure out a way to kill off the Fallen Knight and the Spectral Knight. And then the last wave, they bring the house with the Fallen and Spectral Knights, folks. They bring 10 Fallen Knight from Blackburn's entrance and then 8 Spectral Knights and then a total of 10 Spectral Knights on the right for a total of 10 um, fall night 18 spectral night so that last wave is just all about using physical damaging that you more than likely barracks to hold off the um the hordes of of the of the fallen night and then using the mages to kill off the spectral knights so you, you this was hard because you had to invest your money in in, in a dual tower of uh, physical damaging and mage towers not the hardest in my opinion I, I don't think this is the hardest but it is definitely challenging especially without a hero let's see some clips that's the first wave. Second wave here is the six fallen knights, six spectral knights. You see how, yeah, they get down there pretty hard. You got to put up with all those fallen and spectral knights. There's the, the, the third wave, that right there, you want to use the elemental. If you, you see, if you have if you have the barracks there and you got durable, durable barracks, they can be shifted into werewolves. You don't want that. Then the fourth wave, we got to hold the werewolves and then hold the skeletons fifth wave they brought the skeleton um the spectral knights and then the fall knights the fall knights appear behind them yeah and then you rain a fire to get them in spectral format so you can hurt them with the mage towers that's the best way to deal with that wave and then the last wave they brought the house with all these these combination of physical damaging and um I mean, physical um, armored enemies and then the ma mage magic resistant enemies. So this one was tough, in my opinion, um, just executing, especially without a hero. But not the not the hardest, in my opinion. I don't feel this one was the hardest. Number one is Ancient Necropolis. I rank this one as number one. Um, difficulty scale, however, I have it as the same, but I, I edged it to Necropolis. Um, 
level five upgrades are allowed. No um, heroes are allowed, but again, with, with this, with respect to playing without a hero, starting bounty nine hundred. Um, strategy points a total of 15. Why was it hard? Again, they did bring the Fallen Knight Spectral Knights and then the Necromancer Warg and Abomination. All of that, that, that combo is just tough to put up. The way they bring it on this one made it kind of tough. Um, also, again, because of the Fallen Knight and Spectral Knights, you would need some kind of, you would need an investment. You have to play with the, the back of your mind and investment in physical damaging towers as well as ma magic um, damaging towers as well also another thing is that the necromancers appear four out of the six ways just like just like um um with the swamp things on fungal force they appear a total of 16 times they brought two on the second wave four on the third wave and then um Two again on the fourth wave, then they brought eight of them on the last wave. Very similar to uh, Fungal Force with the Swamp Things. But you have to, dealing with the Necromancers isn't hard, but it's just the fact that you have to keep in the back of your mind that you have to see that enemy consistently. They just, you know that they're annoying because they, they show up and act up. You have to figure out a way to set up a um, more than likely a Tesla Tower to deal with them, but still have utilize your bounty well enough to set up Maze Towers to deal with those Spectral Knights as they're the problem. And also... Um, it can be kind of tough deciding where to rain a fire at as well because you might get overwhelmed with the spectral knights and then they also do a lot of surprise assaults with the zombies and skeletons. Um, you, you, they, they do a pretty good job of that. They surprise you. So you have to, dis it's, it can be tough. Do you want to rain a fire with a necromancer? Do you want to rain a fire with the spectral knights? Do you want to rain a fire with the zombies and skeletons? What do you want to do? You know, it's kind of tough to decide and that's what, it's that surprise ambush that kind of makes this one kind of tough to me in my opinion. I struggle with this quite a bit without a hero on this one and then the last way last thing is that they switch up on each wave with bringing magic resistant and armored enemies quite a quite a few times they do a pretty good job of that like the first wave they brought the wargs and abominations then the next wave they switch up and bring necromancers and then you know they do the surprise assault with the zombies and then they bring the spectral knights but they, they do a pretty good job of switching up um, um, the uh, magic and armor resistant enemies pretty well on this one. And then that is, that's the one I kind of struggle with. This is the wave composition, 18 war, one abomination, first wave, 12 work, one abomination, um, 10 skeletons will spawn out of the top, out of that skeleton pile on the first wave, second wave, two necromancers at the top, two fallen knight, two special knights at the bottom, five special knights out the woods and near the woods, the zombies would spawn out the ground so that would create a combination of physical you know you have that the zombies that are you know physical they can be harmed by it's just hordes of zombies getting in the way of that spectral now you want to get that out of there four necromancers four abominations at the top 14 skeletons that that that's pretty tough with especially with all those abominations and not only that you probably had towers set up on the on the bottom side to deal with all those spectral knights and those zombies so you probably wouldn't have a lot of towers set up on the side where those necromancers were at then the fourth wave two necromancers three fallen knights seven spectral knights the zombies they they do a little trickery on you they spawn them away from the spectral knights instead they spawn on the opposite side and then the fifth wave they they brought back the wargs and abomination 10 extra um, and then they do a lot of s surprise with the skeletons and the zombies. And then the last wave is kind of straightforward. It's not hard. You just kill. You just have one side is all necromancer. The other side is 21 spectral knights. So you pretty much know what to do with the spectral knights, which is why I, that's why I kind of tied this one with 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 um, Castle Blackburn as far as being kind of tough. But I, I, I edged it to an ancient necropolis because it is a lot of trickery and it's kind of tough. You know, um, it's just kind of tough. It was really, really tough to deal with with uh, with a lot of the these waves and how they did the trickery on us a lot. So let's see this this um, some clips. That's the first wave with the wargs and abominations. It's the second wave. You got the necromancer. And then you have the, yeah, see, you have the rain of fire over there with the spectral knights, but you could have did it on the necromancer instead, but it's a tough decision to make. Yep, and then the th third wave, you have the abominations. They just take a while to kill up, but you see I don't have a lot of towers up on that side over there because I invested my money at the bottom. Fourth wave right here is with the spectral knights and the, and the um, fallen knights, but they did spawn a lot of zombies at the top over there, so it's a lot of trickery there. This next wave, they, 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 they can catch you off guard. They brought the wargs to trouble you. 
So, you know, you want to be very smart with the rain of fire. We rain of fire where that spectral night is. Where that's from the previous wave. And then the last wave is straightforward. You just deal with those spectral nights on this on one side, and then you rain a fire typically on that side over there with the necromancer. That though you could rely on the Tesla to decimate them. So that was it. With that was my top five. Those were the those were the levels that I kind of um, I felt like I struggled with a little bit, and I felt were the hardest to do, especially without a hero. So here's some notable mentions though. Uh, another level that is pretty challenging. Most people would say. Um, is Twin Rivers ranked at a 7 out of 10. Only level 2 upgrades are allowed and no hero is allowed. 600 bounty you start off with, 15 strategy points. It was hard. This one was hard because they brought several bandits, brigands, and orcs early on. And they were hard to stop, especially with the, you know, the bounty that you have to work with and the towers that you might have set up. You, you know, the, the, they, they were kind of problematic to deal with in the beginning. Also, it's kind of, it's the shamans were a problem as well. You had to figure out a way to separate the shamans away from, from the hordes of enemies. If you left them wandering, then they caused big, big problems. And then last but not least, the ogres, folks, the ogres, they, they, they were a problem. They brought, they brought them very consistently and with only level two upgrades. I will be specific. You can play with level three, uh, three towers, but you only have level two upgrades. So there's, there's, there's a difference there. So you'd have to use those upgrades to deal with those ogres. And they brought them a lot of them on this one. Here's the wave composition to see. The wolves and goblins there in the first wave, orcs and bandits. Yeah, you see you only got 180 on the first wave. Third wave, they brought the bandits and brigands. They all, however, the bandits and brigands all take the right, they all go one one um, direction. So you may not may or may not have a lot of towers set up over there making that kind of tough. The goblins, the orcs, and the and the shamans all go the and the ogre all go the left side, but you only get 277 bounty for all of that. Fifth wave, you get quite a bit more, but they have um, one direction. They got 16 goblin, five orc, three shaman, one ogre going the left side, 12 wolf, six bandit, eight brigand going the right direction. So they, there they finally have enemies going different directions. And then the last wave, they brought 15 orc, three ogre, 15 brigand, three ogre. So three ogres going, going both directions with those armored um, orcs and brigands. So that's that's that for Twin Rivers. Kind of tough with all those ogres. And then the last, another one that was an honorable mention was Pandemonium. Um, 7.5, I ranked it. This one wasn't all that hard to me, but it, it was kind of a tough one, if, if you ask me. Start You start off with 2,200 bounty. That That's why I didn't think it was this bad, because you get a lot of bounty to begin with. 15 strategy points, that's enough to get two Teslas up going, and you can set them up in the best um, spots on the field to um, deal with the hordes of enemies. It was hard because they brought the Demon Lords five out of six ways. Again, 16 Demon Lords, just like 16 Swamp Things, 16 Necromancers, Ancient Necropolis, they brought 16 Demon Demon Lords. Certain troublesome enemies may get down towards the exits, especially the Galamans. They brought the Galamans consistently and they brought hordes of them to cause problems. It can be tough to decide where Reign of Firing, that really matters, especially on the last wave. And then Thermal Fissures took away a lot of the choke points. And then here's the wave composition. So you see all that. The first wave, the Demon Lord, Demon Hound, Demon Spawn. The, the the second wave they just it, the house got brought primarily on the left side but not so much the demon spawn shouldn't be that problematic because if you had a tesla set up on that right side you can kill them off no problem and focus all your attention on the left side so that that wave isn't all that bad but the galayman is for sure going to get down there so you have to put up with that the third wave the demon legions appear on both sides and then the flares but the demon four demon lords appear out the middle and they time it to where the demon lords will catch up with the with the flarians and the demon legions so you have to be careful of what you want to do with the reign of fire that's what i mean making decisions the fourth wave the galamans six of them came three flarians and then the middle brought 24 demons spawned three flarians again the galamans will get down there like that fifth wave four demon lord five demon hound 12 demons spawn one cerberus so the cerberus you it would grab your attention but the demon hound demon lord combination you can go to sleep on and underestimate that that is tougher than what you might perceive it to be and then the last wave is a good example of making decisions with the reign of fire they brought 12 demon spawn three galayman on the left five demon lord eight flarian in the middle and then nine demon spawn two demon legion on the right so you have a, they trouble you with the with hard enemies on 
um, on out of all directions, Galaman, Demon Lord, Demon Legion. So you have to make a decision as to where you want to rain a fire. But this overall wasn't that bad, but it is a notable mention. So, yep, and that concludes this, folks. That is it for my top five uh, hardest heroic challenges. Um, if you if you have a different list, feel free to. But folks, again, this was kind of hard for me to put together. I had to redo this so many times, and I just it took so much time. That's why I haven't been able to post a lot of other videos. But I, I, I was thinking a lot about this and figuring out what I felt were the hardest, so I came up with an answer, and these were my top five. So if you um, feel free to get in the comment section and voice your top five. Thank you, folks, for watching. Ricky, aka the War Champion. Farewell.